Okay. Yeah, uh, thanks yeah. everyone for coming, turning up for this uh, first uh, 2018 uh, UFMIM webinar. And I'm very glad that we have many new audience today. And today we have our speaker, Dr. Janina Batika, who has done a lot of research in flood resilience. So she's going to talk about how to use this flood resilience index as the communication tool. Uh, she will talk about 20 to 25 minutes. And in the meantime, if you have any question, you can type in in the, the conversation. Or if you prefer, you can ask your question after her presentation. And at the meantime, could you please mute your microphone during her presentation? Uh, so the floor is yours, Janina. Thank you. OK. Thank you, Albert. And um, thank you all who decided to, to, to listen to today's um, um, lecture, speak, talk. Uh, my contribution to today's session is a um, uh, presentation about the Flood Resilience Index as communication tool to a different key stakeholders at the local level. I, um, I said I'm Jelena Batika, I come from Serbia, but my research activities are focused uh, uh, focused in, in, in French cities and local communities, and I work uh, more than eight years at the University of Nice as a project engineer and project manager on FP7 and Horizon 2020 projects, mainly dealing about uh, environment issues, flooding issues, flood risk management, flood resilience, climate change adaptation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, uh, today, first, I will uh, introduce you about the subject, but I believe most of you are from this um, area of science, so you know. But we will just repeat a few, few things. Then uh, I will move to resilience and flood risk management about the basic concept and how uh, do they, they interact in between. Uh, then I will present to you uh, my findings and my development in the area of flood resilience assessment. And I will present you a tool, Flood Resilience Index, that is used for the mapping of uh, buildings and uh, producing a descriptive uh, way how to define the resilience level of different type of buildings in the city. I will present you results for um, eight case studies that I uh, um, studied in um, <clears throat> Europe and in Asia. Then we will move to communication and key stakeholders, what type of communication exists and who are the key stakeholders. And I will finish with a discussion, conclusion and uh, recommendations. Uh, let's start. So we know that uh, floods that happen in urban areas nowadays are governed by the increased frequency. Uh, this comes uh, from uh, many driving forces that exist in urban areas and many pressures that are within the cities, especially big cities. And nowadays the urban flooding is not longer just a natural phenomenon. So it just it's triggered by many things. Uh, as example, you have insufficient, insufficient capacity of existing drainage uh, uh, system to receive the amount of water that is coming. Then you have uh, interact, or the, you have coincidence of a different flooding types at the same time. So you have the the rain, uh, the, the rainfall flood, and then you have the river flood at the same time. So the system cannot accept everything. Then in that case, is of course you have urban flooding. On the other side, existing flood defense structures demonstrate its downsides, because we know that the existing structures are made with a certain return period for the certain. Uh, uh, type of flooding for the certain uh, water depth. Since the frequency of the of the of the rainfalls, a uh, rainfall is changing, and we have increased frequency, and then we have a climate change in the game. So the existing flood defense structures ha ca cannot provide that level of protection. So we need to think about the different approaches in solving problems that are connecting to urban flooding both in Europe and in Asia. And I may say that there are different things of solving this problem, different types of solving these problems in Europe and in Asia. For example, in Europe, we have like a framework document 
uh, water framework directive that is focused on mitigation and adaptation measures. Okay, but then in Asia, totally different. You have international strategy for disaster uh, for disaster risk reduction, and there the focus is on emergency response relief, and it's focused on risk reduction. One of the solutions in order to uh, include resilience thinking and um, promote risk culture within the population is moving to the risk uh, culture and finding the balance between the shape of the land where we live, land use, and urbanization through adaptation, mitigation, prevention, and response and recovery strategies. Also, the sense of social component plays a significant role because for example, my uh, experience, people in Asia and people in Europe, I may say, uh, roughly, they don't see the flood in the same way. Motivation for my research uh, comes from the um, already developed climate risk disaster index by Raib Shaw team in 2009. Uh, this uh, science, uh, science, uh, science, scientist lives in, uh, in Kyoto at Kyoto University, and he has a remarkable uh, development in this area. And I wanted to have the personal, personalized approach for urban areas, focusing just on flooding problems at the beginning. And on the other side, I wanted to create a tool for the decision makers with predominantly application on local level. Guiding question is, can flood resilience of urban systems be evaluated taking into account the characteristic of urban system, the characteristic of the streets, of the pipes, of the networks, of the buildings, etc., etc.? And the second one, what type of communication will improve understanding of flood risk and encourage people to take action? Because we can have many laws, we can have many recommendations, but until we motivate the people to take action, there is nothing going on in the area of risk culture and reducing, reducing the flood damages and increasing the resilient, flood resilience level. So resilience and flood risk management. One concept that is standing, flood risk management, and then we have the new one, the resilience. And the focus should be on integrated approach through interplay of institutions. So a holistic approach that is interplaying different institutions, communication, communication regarding flood risk, and development and implementation of flood modeling tools, not just for engineers and for the scientists, but proper presentation to the decision makers. The urban flood resilience and the review definitions, there are should be some understanding regarding the vulnerability, ecological resilience, and specified resilience, flood resilience. Here on this slide, we, we are seeing the resilience concept as I understood. So on the left graph, we have uh, damages and impact and magnitude of the event with the existing protection measures. And we see the line that is really going up and increasing the damages and impact. But if we add resilience, the damages are reduced in contrast to the magnitude of event. This is the area where we see on the right where, the, where we are placing the resilience and risk of reduction. So for the bigger event, we will have smaller amount of damages than in the, in the, in the, in the form where we don't have the resilience included. Now, the basic definitions. System from ecological point of view doesn't need to define the conditions which will provide some functionality and structure. For example, you have a forest, you have a flood in the forest, and then the ecosystem will find after some time or maybe some years a balance. This is not applicable to the urban communities and urban system because and the, the, the urban system is defined by its capacity to provide some services and some functions to the population. So you cannot uh, expect to have the water a long time within the system and expect functionality and operational functionality of that system. So we are not here speaking about the ecological resilience. We are speaking here about the specified resilience, res resilience to flood. Resilience of physical and social components of urban systems. So we need to take a look both buildings, 
and people. And now the capacity of a system, society, or that is potentially expo exposed to hazard to adapt by resisting or changing in order to reach and maintain an acceptable level of functioning and structure. This is the definition of the resilience that we will proceed uh, further with this presentation. Okay, so first at the beginning we need to define the carrying capacity of the system, both of the people and of the of the of the of the physical components of the system and by that we are uh, thinking about the maximum toler tolerable damage and then we need through vulnerability and resilience measure the ex and assess carrying capacity of the urban system of course there is not a general definition of resilience depending uh, you are what you are exploring and what you are evaluating you are evaluating resilience of urban system to what and up to what level. So here we are uh, uh, evaluating resilience of urban systems to floods, up to what level, depending on the event we are considering. So it's not the same resilience when you have the floods 10 centimeters and one meter. So <clears throat> uh, this can be uh, defined by identifying what system attributes needs to be resilient in order to have the overall resilience resilience of the system. So there are three directions for preventing an urban system to become unstable. Actually, three directions of preventing city uh, of becoming non-operational, so not providing any, any function and any service to the population. So first, we need to adjust the threshold of a system in respect to changes in respect in response to flood waves. Then, define the level to which system is capable to self-organization. So you need to take into account the land, the land use, so the streets, how the measure is, is connected, the transportation lines, etc., etc. Where is the school, where is the hospital, where is the residential area, where is the business area, working area, uh, where you have the, the, the tourism activities, etc., etc. And the third one is to define the level to which system is able to build and increase capacity for learning and adaptation. So you have here the civil services, you have here um, organization of the um, city officials, how they are approaching to people, how they are saving them, how they are providing them support. We are adding resilience to flood risk management. The existing flood risk management cycle has three or four components. So you have intervention, you have recondition, you have reconstruction, prevention, preparation, etc., etc. If you want to add resilience, we have five different, there are five different comp uh, components. Reflect, what are you reflecting? What are you learning from your past events? You have relief, then you have flood. First, you don't uh, expect too much flood because the existing structures are accepting the, the, tr uh, the, 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 the pressure. Then you are resisting because you are applying some measures as a, as, a, as a resistance and you are responding during the flood and then you are having recovery. So within this new cycle, we introduce the resilience into the flood risk management. Also, in each element, these five are the capacity of urban system and communities is improved in each part of the flood risk management cycle. And I can recommend you, I have few papers on this, on this subject uh, ex ex explaining in detail what this, each element, what is uh, covering during the flood risk management and the resilience. So the uh, development of the flood resilience index has two parts. Uh, the first one is the flood resilience index for the system, the whole system. And the second one is um, uh, cascading down to the, to the small part of the system unit of the building. So when we are speaking about overall flood resilience index, the focus is on the five dimensions. The five dimensions of each city is natural dimension, ecolog uh, economical, social, physical, and institutional. And we are evaluating the resilience of each dimension through defined, already defined indicators and sub-indicators. 
the relationship here is um, created between the nature of interaction and the structure of urban system, and this is fundamental. And the flood resilience index as a representation is a representation as a level of flood resilience assessment in analyzed area and for certain flood characteristics. So you can um, I didn't develop this tool for, to to be focused. Uh, and to be applied for every event. You need to have the event, you need to have the flood map in order to uh, estimate the resilience level for that certain flood event. Of course, there are some critical assumptions. This method is a simplification of reality, and it's addressing just the flooding processes in urban systems. I'm now developing the flood resilience index for multi-disasters, but this is not the subject of this uh, uh, lecture. So the process, the first is flood resilience index, and the second one is defining the operational index and how are we adapting our urban environment to increase the resilience, the flood resilience. So first we decompose the system, so we can uh, look at the uh, macro scale, city as it all, or we can look at the micro scale, district, block and parcel. And this is uh, done within uh, GIS mostly. And on the other side, we have mapping. So the land use is adapted to fit the different urban functions and city service. In urban functions, there are eight components, housing, education, work, safety and governance, health, leisure and tourism, religion, and food storage. For the city services, usually that's the place where you are putting the critical infrastructure, transportation network, water network, communication, solid waste network, and energy network. When you're mapping the, your case study like this, then afterwards you are having, a, um, how to, it's much easier to, to define some, uh, some elements of the, of the flood resilience. The basis for this is that uh, I recognize the urban cell, urban function plus its operational structure, because when you are having a building that is not having any connection to the transportation facilities, doesn't have electricity, doesn't have communication, doesn't have water, doesn't have the, 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 the drainage system, then that building is not operational. So urban function plus its operational structure that is given by the city services, by the fluxes. The flood resilience index on city scale, so on big scale, is defined through different elements of the flood risk management cycle that we rearrange to fit the 5R. And each have five different indicators and a set of sub-indicators. And this is developed with, um, with the matrix within the Excel file that is filled. And then at the end, this is all transformed with the different dimensions, natural, physical, economic, social, and institutional. And by use of the average weight mean index method, we are calculating the flood resilience index from scale from uh, one to five, and uh, where one is very uh, very low flood resilience index for the for the given case study, and the five is uh, the maximum value of the flood resilience index. So the study case study is is resilient resilient. Evaluation on the smaller scale, on the block scale. Uh, or the district scale or the parcel scale. So for the district scale and for the city scale, we are applying the way where we have five dimensions and five indicators and different weights. While on the small scale, block scale and parcel scale, we are having uh, external requirements, internal requirements, ability, availability levels and different weights. This is the graph uh, or the scheme for the flood resilience index assessment. So first uh, step is the where we have the urban system with the scales and the components. Then we are characterized the, 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 the risk with the scale integration and flood risk assessment. And we are defining and developing different uh, scenarios. Then we are calculating the index and we are presenting the index, mapping the index in the area. Uh, regarding the results, uh, the develop methodology up to now is applied on the following case studies. So Châtelion Plage in France, Nice in France, Hamburg, Germany, Barcelona, Spain, Taipei in Taiwan, Genoa in Italy, Rathimno in Greece, Beijing in China. And for 
first two case studies, it was the more very detailed um, analysis is done because we, I because I was there and I didn't have so much limitations about the data. Uh, and uh, the, 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 the social sensitivity was not so high. And uh, for the other case studies, I was able to do the city scale, so the big scale. So I circulated the, the matrix and I, uh, I, I, I got the contact for the key, with the key stakeholders and they filled the matrix and together we, we, we evaluated the flood resilience index. So in the following slides, I will uh, present you my results and I will try to be more descriptive. So the first one, very detailed, was uh, Châtillon Plage and the new one, Châtillon Plage in France. And the data used for this is a uh, 2D hydraulic uh, modeling. Uh, I think that the results from, are from Telemac. I didn't do the modeling. Uh, then the land use data that I, I, I was given, statistical data regarding population, job activities, income, and gender. Uh, then um, I was able to have, of course, institutional frameworks related to flood risk management and uh, the, um, the, the status of the application of the Water Framework Directive. So for this case study, I could act, I, uh, we conducted the flood resilience index mapping on the city scale, on the building scale, mapping of vulnerability for each building in the case study, risk mapping, and the direct damage assessment. Now, I must say that for direct damage assessment, I must say thank you, Albert, because uh, he provided me the tool I just applied. You will see the results. So well, these pictures are all the maps that, uh, that I got as, as a result. So let's start from the left. So we have uh, here the flood map for the, for, for the all, all, all area, so t 2D modeling. And then uh, for the given land use, we um, introduced the uh, different functions and services. So we map, we did mapping, and uh, we did uh, uh, decomposing. So for the, we, we we did analysis for the for the building for the building scale. And here, I'm not sure, but you will have the the PPT slides later. There is a map for vulnerability. Uh, first is for risk, then vulnerability, then for the flood resilience index. And on the right is uh, the, the damage, direct damage assessment. So please note that this is done for each building in the city. So there is like, uh, uh, I think there is like uh, 5,000 buildings in the, in, in the whole area. And for each building, different type of the building, different structure of the building, we were able to evaluate the resilience. On the right side, on the right side of the, of the slide, you have evaluation uh, based on the different um, dimensions within the city. So natural dimension, social, economic, institutional, and physical. And their average value is 2.38. So the flood resilience index for this area is 2.38. Now the table is representing the, <clears throat> the flooded buildings that are mapped within the case study, the number of the flooded buildings, the total number of the flooded buildings, and the total damage by each type of the building and the total damage for this flood event. So this is highly applicable to any other case study, this type of analysis. And it's, uh, how to say, very educational to the city officials when you go and present and want to, to, to say what will uh, some uh, protection measure do to the existing damages. Will it increase in this case or or, or, or decrease, of course. The next case study is Nice, France. The data, the, okay, I need to speed up. The data used is 2D hydraulic modeling, MIC 21, land use data, statistical data regarding population, institutional frameworks related to flood risk management. And the results are following. So we have the flood map, 2D. We have the land use for functions and services decomposed. We have the flood damage calculated for each building, and we have the flood resilience index. Again, we have the table with the estimation of the total damages for each building. And the flood resilience index for, for Nice is 3.45. Very good. Now, the presentation of, um, of the other case studies. So here I mapped all the case studies. It's here, so I just uh, was able to do the 
the evaluation on the city level. So for the Barcelona, Beijing, Genoa, Hamburg, Nice, Chatillon Plage, Retimno, and Taipei. And um, the next point is the communication and the key stakeholders. The aim of this research was to increase involvement of key stakeholders in the decision-making process. Now, there are different ways how you are including different st stakeholders. Uh, you have one-way process where you have information sharing, two-way process with a consultation, Initi when you are initiating the power, the, the power through different collaboration, share power, or the power transfer. So we created the different uh, maps that we were able to present to the city state, uh, to the city officials and um, in the conversation with them we present our uh, the possible strategies that are able uh, to to be applied for the certain case study this is the map that are developed for the chatelion plage in the form of atlas so we developed the maps we communicated mostly with maps and we talk about the resilience and how to increase the resilience and we make understandable possible solutions as a result we have development of the risk culture in the area so we have the gathering of the people and speaking about the the critical event and speaking about to what shall what should be done in the future they are, they are starting to understand the risk. They are starting to consider different measures to protect them and their activities over there. They are willing to listen about the solutions, to organize some actions. Uh, and uh, we worked hard here in this area of building the capacity of human uh, resources. Um, as a conclusion, I can, have, I can say that this is a challenging, challenging and risky task to involve stakeholders because you have the social component that is different from the case study to case study. And the first uh, step is to map key stakeholders. And the Flood Resilience Index can have the good integration within the decision-making process on the local level because it's providing the vital information to the stakeholders because you're having the mapping of each house so you can recognize your house and see your level of protection. And of course, the flood resilience index method allows the more development of multi, on multi-risks. And it's representing a very useful tool for stakeholders and decision makers. And uh, I would love in the future to work with the stakeholders on a local level predominantly and to, and to try to, 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 to increase resilience, flood resilience in, in, in urban areas. I would like to, uh, to, to thank to the possibility to work on FP7 projects. Orfu and Pearl, we are now concluding the, the Pearl project. I would like to thank the municipality, municipality in Côte d'Azur, municipality Chatillon Plage, engineering scientific teams in case study areas, and Albert Chan, who invited me, and uh, he did a very good contribution during my research. So thank you for your attention, and please, uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, let me know. Albert? Yeah. Thank you, Janina. So it's very interesting you're talking about what you have done in so many different cities. So do we have some questions from the audience? Okay, could I have a first one? Uh, just you talk about this uh, estimation in different cities, and yes. have you tried to look into if they <clears throat> implement some different measures? So how will this resilience change for different cities? Uh, uh, well, for Nice, uh, we were able to to map the resilience and to achieve the higher resilience uh, protect uh, resilience uh, level for the population in the in the old city, the the mostly uh, the high uh, flooded area in Nice, with a simple measure like putting the door protection because the the flood depth was not so high and uh, the door barrier was uh, enabling water um, disabling water to enter the house. In that case, direct damages are significantly decreased so it was uh, it was very good and we presented that and we had like, like uh, very good uh, results with the, with the city officials on the other side uh, the the case study Chatillon plage where there was a very high uh, social sensitivity because the the Xintia event that occurred 2010 caused a lot of deaths 
and uh, that area was um, transferred into the black risk zone and uh, we needed to go slowly so now we are just working on structural and increasing uh, the capacity of the local population to understand risk and to see what actions are they able to to apply but mostly we are working on the capacity building of human resources in that area and i think it's a long time process but uh, we are having the new project reconnect uh, and i think we will continue to work with, a, with the same case study and we will have some results but in five years excellent thank you do we have any questions from audience No. Well, I was looking forward to have some discussion. <laughs> yes, so if not, so we were run, running out of time. So I would like to thank uh, Janina again for your excellent presentation and thanks uh, Albert. to everyone. Yes, yes. Albert. Hi. Uh, actually, I have here a, um, a um, student of, of mine doing um, a master and he had some questions to pose to um, to our guests, to Jelena, and uh, maybe he, well, he would like to, to pose some questions to her. So I'm going to pass it. Okay. Oh, that's good. 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 Yes, um, please. Yes, hello, and thank you for your presentation. It's very clear and interesting. Uh, my name is Kai Feng Chen. Um, I just have a there's a question about the compar comparability between these uh, flood flood resilient index since at each case study we have different source of um, you look at different source of data and although they might be similar but they come from different authority maybe and how it's uh, comparability between each case study like regarding this flood resilience index thank you okay so uh, there is no way you can compare uh, because on one side you have of course different source of data providing because uh, you have different states you know and on the other side each case study has its own flood event so it's not the same flood in for example in Beijing and it's not same flood the same flood uh, characteristics in, uh, in, in in Nice so you need to look each case study separately because it's not just you are giving uh, the land use data and you are giving the flood map and then you need you, you are able to how to say uh, to compare no you are looking system and the system has a social component and the social components between different case studies are different and it's not comparable of course you can create a filter but then you are going too far into the social science and uh, i'm not uh, an expert in that but from the point of view of resilience you are just looking different systems and their evaluation so you have the dimensions so you can compare different dimensions but not comparing the the data just the results thank you thank you very much uh, excuse me but is, isn't it the objective of these indexes that somehow we can uh, compare across different cities Yes, you can compare. Yes, yes, you can compare. But each city, each case study has different structure, different uh, land use. So you can have you can have flat areas with a very high flooding, and on the other side, very good uh, and and very good resilience. And on the other side, you can have the the hilly areas and very low resilience. But you can compare that. You can because you are evaluating the flood resilience index and you can compare them by the different resilience index. Isn't that there an, an effect from the sources of data that you're getting from? Because I think that's the point uh, my yes. student was raising. Y yes, yes. Because, for example, if you have the limited data, then you are forced to go just evaluation on the bigger scale so you go evaluation through different dimensions because you don't have the data you don't have the data for the land use etc etc when you have more data you you are able to apply both ways of, of of evaluation of the index and go into the heart of the problem okay thank you we 
we have our questions done through. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any more? Uh, Hi, Elena. Uh, it's Katya. I'm just really tempted to ask. When we speak about comparison, um, can, how do different events in the same location compare in terms of the flood resilience index? What do you mean? Because for, for each uh, flood event, you are having a different flood map. Then you yes, have the exactly. different flood Yes, you have the different flood map. When you have different flood map, you have the number of buildings flooded different, differ from case to case. But overall, you can you can have that you can say and you can have the conclusion that for this flood event the resilience is higher than for this flood event. And then you can go into the core of the problem and see what is influencing that resilience because you have indicators, you have uh, other data that you can take a look in. So have you done that in the past, just to uh, compare the the overall numbers? And yes. are they yes. similar? Yes. Uh, for, yes, yes, yes. Uh, for uh, all case studies I presented, for all because I didn't have time here to present everything, we developed a set of the scenarios. For each case study, at least two or three scenarios. For some case studies, even four scenarios. So we have the case study, we have four different flood events over four different return periods. And for each return period, for example, we were able to calculate the flood resilience index on the building scale. This was done for the, at least for the French case study. And we had uh, uh, different flood resilience indexes because this is specified flood resilience. Yes, up I see. To, for the flood, you have to certain level. At that level is triggered by the existing uh, corresponding uh, flood map. Yeah. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Any more questions? Okay, if not, I think we are going to close today's session and thanks again for everyone for turning up the webinar and thanks to Janina for this very interesting talk. And I think mm -hmm. there are people that are you know, very interested about this flood resilience topic. So we probably will organize some more webinar like this in the future. And thanks everyone for okay. your contribution. And if you are interested in talk to talk about your research topic, please contact me and all our material will be uploaded to the web uh, social media channel, YouTube, so you can watch that and in the future. And thanks again, and we will see you next time. Thank you. Thank you, Albert, inviting me. It was a pleasure. Goodbye. Bye-bye.